so uh, the next type of nitrogenous waste is uh, urea we have already discussed uh, monotelism uh, now we'll talk about the second one that is ureotelism so ureotelism term uh, it is given when the excretory material or the excretory nitrogenous waste is urea and 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 such organisms which excrete urea uh, they are known as ureotelic organisms uh, we have already discussed in the uh, previous video previous lecture that when ammonia gets excreted the process is known as ammonotelism and the uh, uh, organisms which ge uh, which gets uh, which which excretes uh, ammonia they are known as ammonotelic so here the process is known as ureotelism uh, here this process is known as ureotelism and uh, the organisms are known as ureotelic organisms are known as ureotelic and the nitrogenous waste is urea this is the uh, nitrogenous waste here you can see this nitrogenous waste it is urea now what is the advantages of uh, excretion of urea over ammonia so uh, let's uh, talk about first how urea excretion is a better option than ammonia for uh, organisms which are terrestrial or cannot afford to lose that much of uh, water so uh, the advantages here you can see the advantages are uh, first one is urea is uh, it is less toxic as compared to ammonia so urea is less toxic as compared to ammonia uh, one lakh times less toxic than ammonia so and the, uh, this urea it is uh, very uh, means it is less toxic than compared to ammonia uh, and it is one lakh time less toxic toxic than ammonia and that is why the organisms uh, if they cannot eliminate or lose higher amount of water they can retain urea in the body because it is it is not that much toxic and uh, since it is less toxic as compared to ammonia and not only just like one one time or two times or three times but it is one lakh times more uh, means it is one lakh times less toxic than ammonia so it is compared to ammonia it is very less toxic so uh, that's the reason it can be stored in the body for a longer period of time the third point you can see can be stored in the body for a longer period of time it can be stored in the body for a longer period of time since it is less toxic and uh, uh, yes that is the third point uh, and and uh, the uh, next is requires less amount of water for elimination and this uh, urea for elimination of urea it requires less water if you are able to recall uh, the earlier lecture uh, we have discussed that to eliminate one gram of ammonia almost uh, 300 to 500 ml of water is required uh, whereas now you can see here uh, to excrete one gram of urea only 50 ml of water is required so as compared to uh, 300 to 500 ml almost a uh, half a liter which is required in the case of uh, ammonia excretion this uh, 50 ml is very much less so organisms which cannot afford to lose uh, that much of water can choose uh, uh, ureotelism over ammonotelism and and uh, the or the terrestrial organisms or or if the organisms want to con wants to convert uh, conserve water so they they they, they will prefer to uh, losing the nitrogenous waste as urea instead of ammonia so now how is urea synthesized so how urea synthesis takes place so synthesis of urea uh, in the case of higher organisms uh, like human beings in uh, it it takes place it takes place in the liver by by a process or 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 a cycle which is known as urea cycle or ornithine cycle here you can see uh, urea cycle or ornithine cycle so uh, urea cycle or ornithine cycle is uh, nothing but a conversion of toxic ammonia to urea the conversion that cycle is known as the pro or the ci or cycle or the process is known as urea cycle or ornithine cycle so this is the place where urea is produced in the case of human beings or higher organisms there is one more uh, example that is cartilaginous fish here you can see in the case of cartilaginous fish so in the case of cartilaginous fish what happens urea is uh, produced in all the tissues of the body in every tissue of the body uh, urea is produced except 
brain kind of tissue brain heart all those kind of tissues but uh, um, excluding that almost in all parts of the body uh, of cartilaginous fissures urea is synthesized but in the case of higher organisms like human beings it is formed in the liver and the, the cycle that is known as urea cycle or ornithine cycle there is one more name actually uh, given to the cycle it is also known as crab hanslet cycle so it is named after uh, the scientist who actually explained the cycle so uh, so how is actually urea uh, produced how actually uh, urea is produced so here you can see this chemical reaction so as we have uh, uh, we will we'll get to this uh, in the coming um, discussion so as we have already seen in the case of higher organisms like humans liver is the main site of uh, 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 urea production um, and and in the case of uh, cartilaginous fishes the group which we which we also call as uh, elasmobranchs so that that includes uh, sharks and rays so the in in those in those elasmobranchs urea production takes place everywhere in the body except organ except organs like brain heart etc so these are the places where it will not take place the brain heart etc they these are the places uh, where urea production will not take place so now how exactly this is going to take place so uh, ammonia here you can see now coming back to this uh, chemical reaction the ammonia is made to react with carbon dioxide this is nh3 ammonia is made to react with carbon dioxide and uh, this gives us urea this is the formula of urea nh2 co nh2 so there are two molecules of ammonia one carbon dioxide so uh, and it will form urea and uh, water molecule will be given out this is the water water molecule will be given out so this process or this reaction is energy consuming so uh, here energy is required a lot of an lot of means a uh, higher amount of energy is required in the uh, in this reaction but it, it is still a beneficial process the uh, excretion of urea is still a beneficial process because uh, in spite of uh, spending the energy that we talked of now uh, it is it is uh, less toxic than uh, urea uh, sorry less toxic than ammonia urea is less toxic than ammonia and that's why it can be stored in the body for a longer period of uh, time without uh, causing any ill effect to the tissues or the body without causing any harm to the body and uh, therefore uh, so it can be stored in the body for long for longer period of time and the uh, uh, amount of water required for its excretion is also very less so even though a higher amount of energy is required in this reaction the but uh, in spite of requiring the higher amount of energy higher amount of energy uh, it has got some pros uh, such as it is less toxic than we have already discussed it is less toxic it requires less amount of water and it can be stored in the body for a longer period of time so even after spending the uh, so much of energy the conversion of toxic substance into urea is a benef beneficial reaction or or a process for the organisms so now we'll look at the examples here so now we'll, we'll look at the examples uh, of uh, the animals which which animals or organisms which excrete urea those uh, organisms are known as ureotelic organisms Ure examples of ureotelic organisms so uh, in this human beings are in included human beings are ureotelic and we can say mammals basically and among mammals even aquatic mammals are there second one you can see even aquatic mammals are there like whales seals etc they they are also included and desert mammals or or animals like uh, uh, camel and uh, uh, kangaroo rats all these are included and as we have already discussed the cartilaginous fishes and uh, what are cartilaginous fishes though the cartilaginous fishes actually doesn't contain bones they contain cartilages in, s in place of bones so they are known as cartilaginous fishes so like sharks rays skates so in the these uh, elas though collectively known as elas elasmobranchs so in this elasmobranchs also uh, urea is excreted so they are ureotelic so these are the uh, main categories we of organisms which are ureotelic. 
so we will also talk a little bit about uh, dual excretion <coughs> so uh, along with the, this ureterism so we have already uh, we have we have uh, seen that uh, tadpoles tadpoles so uh, tadpole that is the uh, larval stage of frog so what happens uh, what is actually okay so what is uh, dual excretion dual excretion is actually uh, here you can see some animals perform two modes of excretion this is that is known as dual excretion so in some organisms what happens uh, excretion there are two modes of excretion occurs so that it, it is known as uh, dual excretion we will now talk about tadpole tadpole which is the larval stage of frog so uh, what happens is that tadpoles are ammonotelic because tadpole is aquatic it lives in the water and it can lose that uh, lose uh, as much of water as uh, as it is required because it lives in the water but as metamorphosis takes place and uh, uh, tadpole starts changing it itself into an adult that is a frog it becomes it becomes ureotelic so certain organisms so show dual excretion uh, then example another one is earthworm so what happens in earthworm is that earthworm is a monotelic uh, when it is in the uh, water means when when water is plenty but when water is little bit scarce water is less then it becomes ureotelic and next it is uh, which means it is condition dependent earthworm uh, the mode of excretion it is condition dependent when water is plenty it sh it is a monotelic when water is less it is ureotelic next is lungfish xenopus and uh, which is the art, uh, african toad so what happens uh, here is that uh, when when uh, this lungfish and genopus when it lives in the aquatic uh, environment it is a monotelic because it gets enough water but when when they undergo hibernation that is in the mud so they changes itself into uh, ureotelic now same in the case of crocodiles so crocodiles when when they are in the water they are a monotelic but when they are kept out of the water for a longer period of time what happens is that they changes itself into ureotelic so that they can uh, conserve water so that they can conserve water they, since the water uh, is not available not uh, available for them since the since they are kept out of the water for longer period of time so they changes uh, themselves from a monotelic to ureotelic so these are the organisms which are uh, capable of excreting both ammonia as well as urea in certain certain, certain conditions so this is all about so we'll talk about uh, the third important type uh, type uh, that is urecotelism where uric acid is eliminated so uh, that we will uh, talk about uh, in the next lecture so uh, up to now we have all we have discussed ammonotelism that is excretion of ammonia then uh, today we discussed uh, ureotelism that is uh, excretion of urea the next lecture will be discussing about uricotelism that is uh, excretion of uh, uric acid so this is all about this is all for uh, today thank you